The University of London received its first charter in 1836. It was not until a century later that it found a home of its own in the present Senate House. At first, the university was housed in temporary accommodation at Somerset House in the Strand, and later in Burlington House off Piccadilly. In 1870, it moved to new premises in Burlington Gardens. Thirty years later, in 1900, the university moved to the Imperial Institute in South Kensington. Finally, in 1927, the Senate of the University obtained a ten and a half acre site in Bloomsbury with the help of the Rockefeller Foundation. The Senate House complex now stands on part of this site. In 1931, the University Court selected Charles Holden as architect for the construction of the new buildings. Holden was already well known for his work for London Transport, which included many stations on the then expanding underground system, and he was undoubtedly one of the greatest English architects of his generation. For the University, Holden proposed a building which would last for 500 years. His original design was based upon a spinal layout. King George V commented that it looked like a battleship. Holden rejected a steel-framed building in favour of a self-supporting masonry construction, which he considered to be more durable. The exterior of the building is faced in granite and Portland stone, which was transported by barge up the Thames to London. The building work began on the site in December 1932 and the foundation stone was laid by King George V in June 1933. The administrative offices were ready for occupation in 1936, the year of the university's centenary. The university at last had a permanent headquarters in central London. In order to record this significant period in the history of the university, John Curry of Personal Films Limited was commissioned to film every stage of the building's progress. However, this commission was never completed and filming appears to have ceased in 1937, some months after the occupation of the administrative offices, the first phase of the building to be finished. Furthermore, the edited material only takes us as far as the laying of the foundation stone and this edited film was not given its anticipated soundtrack. We shall now see that film just as it was left some 50 years ago. The site for the new university buildings was immediately to the north of the British Museum. This was the scene when filming began in the autumn of 1932. The site had been cleared some years earlier of all but the foundations of the former Georgian houses. A 
curious miscellany of debris littered the site. Here, Charles Holden, the architect, on the right, visits the site with Dr. Edwin Deller, principal of the university. Together with a small party, they had come to see the traditional cutting the first sod as work began. In order to provide a stable foundation for such a large building, concrete piles needed to be driven to a depth of 30 feet below basement level. Mechanical shovels were used to excavate the site before this pile driving work could be done. This important occasion of laying the foundation stone 
brought together some 3,000 people, including representatives of most of the major universities and learned societies of the world. Among those present were Stanley Baldwin, the Chancellor of the Universities of Cambridge and St Andrews, the Mayor of Holborn and the Lord Mayor of London. On their arrival, King George V and Queen Mary were met by the Chancellor of the University, the Earl of Athlone. The King was first taken to inspect the Guard of Honour mounted by the University of London contingent of the Officers' Training Corps. After further formalities, which included a prayer from the Archbishop of Canterbury, King George was invited to lay the foundation stone. This stone can still be seen in its original position at the foot of the Senate House Tower. The filmmaker John Curry had also edited, in rough cut form, some further sequences of shots which show how building work progressed after the laying of the foundation stone. These sequences are particularly interesting as a record of building methods during the 1930s. The sequences themselves had not been put together as a finished film and were in no particular order. We have assembled this material into what appears to be its chronological order. The general contractor for the building of Senate House was Holland and Hannon and Cubitts Limited, and subcontracts were given to many well-known British companies.
The next task was to sink over 1,300 concrete piles. These were 30 feet long and were driven in by three-ton steam hammers. Work began on the superstructure during the summer of 1934. Up to first floor level, the walls are built of engineering bricks set in cement mortar and faced with grey Cornish granite. At ground floor level, the walls are three feet four and a half inches thick. Above the first floor, they are built of wire cut bricks faced with Portland stone. By August 1936, the south wing of the building was ready for the administrative staff to make the move from South Kensington to their new home.
Other unedited shots show how subsequent building work continued. The tower, 209 feet high, was completed in September 1937 and the north wing was ready for occupation one year later. Further development of the site continued until the outbreak of war in September 1939. With the Second World War occupying everyone's attention, John Curry's film was laid aside and forgotten. These cans of film remained unnoticed until quite recently. It is perhaps appropriate that this film has been publicly seen for the first time in this the 50th anniversary of the occupation of Senate House and the 150th anniversary of the University of London. <laughs>